everyone? So basically the take home points from Tara's presentation are that we got a lot of programs at ASU that can help you develop your idea and also a lot of competitions which you can get funding from your idea. Okay? So if you don't have the money to develop a mobile app, etc., ASU can help you fund it if you provide the good, a good business plan. If you can convince the judges that they should invest in it, basically. So that's the summary. So being an my name is Rafael Testai. Being an entrepreneur, what does that mean? You have to improvise when you're an entrepreneur. See the projector? Doesn't work. We improvise and we still get the presentation. So you have to have that attitude whenever you're going to start a business. How many of you guys, by a raise of hands, want to start a business in the future? That's cool. All the way up. Let me see one. Okay, good. All right. So I started my first business when I was 21, and I'm 25 now. I also went to Barrett, the Honors College, and I graduated two years ago. I had a degree in genetics. But uh, now I'm working on mobile apps. So completely different from what I graduated with. So basically, I want to talk to you about a little bit about what I did. When I was 21, I started a business. I was basically a shoe restoration business. I came up with a product, and I recorded myself putting that product on a shoe, and that product restored the shoe and made it look new again. And I sold that product on YouTube, and it spread like wildfire throughout the internet. So with that money, I was paying rent every month. It was residual income, and it felt great. So then I graduated from Barrett two years ago, and I want to do something big, something important. And my dream has always been to make a mobile app. How many of you guys want to make a mobile app? I raise your hands. Okay, we got like five people. None of you guys are even remotely interested in mobile apps at all? No? Okay. All right, well, I'm going to talk to you guys about mobile apps in case you change your mind in the future. Because I already talked about my YouTube business last talk, so I want to talk about this topic this time. I'm going to give you guys some good advice when making mobile apps and when coming up with new ideas, especially for mobile apps. The take home point is really to keep it real. So if you want to come up with an idea for a mobile app, try to see already what's out there for this idea that you have. And it turns out that most ideas for mobile apps can already be fulfilled with Facebook. See, um, I work at the Center for Entrepreneurship with Tara, like we mentioned, and a lot of students come to us, a lot of college students come to us with ideas. Some of these ideas are, uh, let's make an app for students to get together and share study notes, etc. Well, you can already do this via Facebook. So just keep it real with yourself whenever you come up with an idea. And I want to open up for a QA. and uh, I want to bear it, the mobile apps, etc. If you guys want to ask me any questions about being an entrepreneur, what Barrett's like, uh, feel free to ask me. Okay, go ahead. Do you regret getting a degree in genetics when you are now working on mobile apps? No, not at all. Because the thing that I learned from genetics is that in the world of science, you have to propose hypotheses, right? What I think is going to happen. And then you sit in a room, and everybody in the team in the lab basically puts holes in your hypothesis. They're like, well, I don't think that will happen, Rafael, because X and Y, and et cetera. So you really have to detach yourself from the idea that you proposed and take all the heat, basically. You're in the hot seat. So that mentality is very important to carry with you when you're an entrepreneur or in life in general. And I took a lot of things away from science also. Uh, basically, whenever you see like you know memes on Facebook or whenever you see those kind of things, I question those things. Like, did this person really say that quote just because they have letters next to his photograph? Uh, it's that mentality of constantly being skeptical about the information that the world gives you. And I learned that from science. Next question. Back there, with the water bottle. Yeah. <coughs> So what mobile app did you create? So we're in the process of creating a mobile app called Event Key. And basically what it does is when you go to professional networking events, like Chambers of Commerce, uh, Startup Weekends. Have you guys heard about Startup Weekends? No? It's a place where people come together and they come up with ideas. So whenever you go to professional settings like this, it allows for you to check in with your LinkedIn. And I highly suggest that you guys get a LinkedIn account how many of you guys know what LinkedIn means? Okay, good. So basically, it's like your online resume. And whenever you apply to jobs, your employer will look at, you, will look at your LinkedIn. So I highly suggest you get one of those. So the mobile app basically allows for you to check into the place with your LinkedIn profile, 
with one click of the button, and then you see everybody else is waiting in the room that checked in with the link. That's what the mobile app does. Uh, full schedule every time. So between 12 and 16 credits. I would strongly not recommend taking over 16 credits. I know that all you guys are very good students, uh, but if you take over 16 credits, like your life is miserable. I've seen it with my friends. They're all stressed out. Uh, they can't go to the gym. They can't do anything. So I would highly recommend that you keep it under 16 credits. And besides, what's the rush? You get out of college, you get a job full time, and then you're gonna think about your college days and how much fun you had in college. So enjoy your time in college. It's it's really cool. Don't rush the process. What question? Anybody else? What question? Back there. What kind of technology do you have to deal with development for the application? Could you say that again louder? So what kind of technology, knowledge do you need to make apps? Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to making apps, you don't necessarily have to know all the coding knowledge and all of that. Like I don't, and I, I don't know how to code and all that stuff. You just have to have a good idea and really test if that idea is something that people actually want. And then you can get a co-founder that's more of a, of a coder or a developer and he can help you create that idea. So to answer your question, you don't really need that much knowledge. Uh, how many people did you work with when creating this app? Ooh, I work with, well, just to count students, 15 students helped me with that, right? So what I would do is put my, this is a, a cool, like a secret almost. I would put what I need on the Barrett listserv, which is the email that I get sent out to all the Barrett students. And I say, hey, I'm working on this mobile app. We need help doing design. Anyone interested, reach out to me. And that's how I got people to work with me. So 15 students and a lot of mentors in the community helped me out. <laughs> Any other questions? Back there? So if you started out like, um, interested in genetics, what would you switch to like, business and mobile app? Okay, great question. The reason I chose genetics is partially because my mother is a doctor, and parents have a big influence in what we do in our careers. Uh, how many of you guys feel like um, that's, that's the case? You know, parents, they help you decide what kind of career you're gonna take, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I kind of felt like I wanted to go into medicine. I was pre-med, and genetics was gonna allow for me to express my creativity. But it turns out that I absolutely hated genetics by the time I graduated. And I had the courage to, once I graduated, to not pursue that, that career path and actually start doing what I want to do. So that's why I switched. And it, it's starting out great. Actually, last month, I won an award. I was holding a big check on stage for the Hispanic Entrepreneur of the Year. So that was pretty fun. Starting out well. Yeah. Any other questions? Right here. Um, where are you from and why did you choose to go to Barrett? Yeah? Guess. Where do you think I'm from? Like, where? Argentina. How'd you know? You're out of state. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You can tell right away? Yeah. What kind of You're from Argentina? No, but I'm <laughs> <laughs> Can you get the camera a little bit? Just your accent, just how you enunciate your words. Yeah? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir, say the double L. Say, say galletas. Galletas? Let's not get sidetracked. <laughs> Any other questions? She asked you. Yeah, she asked Cool. Yeah, she asked you why did you decide to go to Barrett. Oh, why I chose Barrett. Thank you very much. Okay, so here's the thing with Barrett. You're going to hear a lot of things. A lot of smart kids are going to say, you know what? I don't want to join Barrett because the honor thesis, I heard about all these horror stories about the honor thesis being so difficult. Have you guys heard that before? No. Any no? Well, you hear that. You heard it? Yeah, okay. They're gonna say, wow, it's so difficult. It's like taking like three extra classes on top of what you're already doing. It is tough, it is tough when you're doing an thesis. But 
I wanted to differentiate myself from the crowd. I, I don't want to be average. I always like to do extra things. I like to shine. So the best thing to do is to join um, opportunities that that would allow for me to do that. And when when I thought about Barrett, uh, some friends were like, no, we're not going to do it. And I decided to do it. I applied. A lot of people that have better GPAs than I did got turned down, but they accepted me because of all the extracurricular activities that I did, all the other programs, all the other like internships that I did. Um, so that's why I decided to join Barrett, so I could shine. And once you get it on your resume, uh, people always ask about it in job interviews. It really helps you distinguish yourself. Honor student, Arizona State. They'll never take that away from you. Uh, so what classes should we take to prepare you for entrepreneurship? See, in my opinion, I always, I'm always honest. So, in my opinion, I, I never took an entrepreneurship class. It's something that you can learn on your own, just surfing the web. There's just so many different resources. So my recommendation, if you wanna be an entrepreneur, this is what I would do, is pick something that you're passionate about. Maybe you're passionate about uh, engineering, you're passionate about biology. You pick that subject, you become an expert in that subject, and then you learn entrepreneurship on your own time surfing the web. That's some really good advice. Any other questions? Oh, you said you did a lot of extracurriculars. Um, what can you like list some? Okay, so back in the time I was I wanted to be pre-med and a scientist, so I applied at a lot of different uh, scientific places in the valley. I was constantly surfing the web looking for opportunities, so basically working at laboratories. And one more question. All the way back. In your own words, uh, did you uh, tell us what it means to be an entrepreneur? In my own words, what it means to be an entrepreneur. Honestly, I think entrepreneur, I give such honest talks, like I share you guys my, my honest opinion. Entrepreneur is just a complicated word. I don't even like that word. To me, I don't. To me, an entrepreneur is just doing what makes sense. You see somebody, uh, the way things work doesn't work very well, and you, you have a better, a better solution, and you just come up with a solution, and you put it out there. That's it. Doing what makes sense. And that's the last question. Thank you.